People, 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 right now you're watching Factory 78, Kali P, the Lyrical Fire, live and direct. Give thanks for tuning in. Step in! Well, keeping going is that I love what I do, first of all, you know. Like, this is um, what I've been doing all my life. I grew up as a musician. My dad also is a musician, still okay. touring up to this day, you know, with one of the biggest cultural movements in Guadeloupe called Akio, you know. So telling you about my background, I'm from Guadeloupe. Yeah. It's a small Caribbean island, also Switzerland. That's where I was born, actually, you know. And I've been doing music all my life, so really professional as Calipi since 15, and I never wow. stop, you know. How old are you right now? Right now I'm 39. <laughs> oh wow, okay, so okay. Right. It's been almost 24 years that yes, we're okay. really in this. Been living in Jamaica for almost 10 years, you know, and mm. really came back to Europe 2020. What makes you come back to the, uh, Um, Europe? I came back to Switzerland specifically because that's where my daughter lives, you know. So I really want to spend my time beside her. Um, It shaped it in a very... I can say natural form because my dad now is a is a Rasta man. I grew up as a as a Rasta youth, you know. That is definitely what was there in my house, you know. Music, drums, mm. specifically, you know, um, African music, drum sound. That is really what I grew up with, what I knew first and best. So that is really what formed and shaped my love for the music from an early age and I've been always naturally just doing music, writing lyrics without even knowing that one day I will be a singer, you know? Yeah, so man. Do you play any, any instrument? Yeah, yeah, I play drums. That's mm. really my main instrument, okay. drum set, but also percussions and stuff like that. Then we started along the way producing, you know, so, yeah. So do you produce most of your music or when you started? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Um, I just right now, on this project that I'm putting out very soon in November, is the first time I took action as a producer with music that I'm putting out. But I've been always playing music in the studio um, for myself with even a next band, but just not really putting it out there like that. I think, as I said, I really started early in the music. I would always say like it's, that's something I studied, so I really listened to all type of music and I without even saying it's this or this mm. is just like the whole movement itself shaped me you know just the life like i would go to the studio and build songs every day every day cool. every day and that also built the musical ears you know so then you know all right i want to go for this sound i want this producer to come in and work with this one blend it up and create some it's new something. fire yeah just to get it right, Lyrical Fire was a, was part of an album called I Thoughts oh, okay. that we dropped in 2016. So Lyrical Fire is not an album? Lyrical Fire, no, is a song. Uh, yeah, Lyrical Fire is my first album, album actually, 2008. Yeah. 2008. Yeah, 2008, for real. <laughs> <laughs> my debut album, 2008, was Lyrical Fire. That is very right. And was a was a big thing you know at that time it was also still physical copies selling cds vinyls oh, wow. everything crazy you know so yeah man it was a was a, was a great entry for me as a young youth you know putting out a, a album with a oh, with a big label at that time you know pop music a record as well, vinyl? yeah yes. definitely everything was vinyl. vinyls um um lps yeah cds me, I'm coming from a sound system culture and before even being a singer, I was really even a listener of music, like I always say, and I used to spend hours and days in the record shops going through the different covers of, of vinyls, you know, it's the first thing that got my attention when I came in, because that's really what I love since I'm a, I'm a little boy, you know, I used to go to parties go to, to the DJ booth and, and check out their vinyls as a little boy, you know, because I just like the big covers, the art, the whole cultural upbringing for me, spiritual upbringing is something that very much shaped me and very much gave me strength and confidence in what I'm doing, the music. And also I have to say as a, as a young youth, you know, when uh, 
there was a lot of things going on you know you go to school you have a lot of different influences you know coming up and for me it was to keep a strong faith and be guided in something that keeps me firm and and clean at the same time so like right there i just make use of what i really grew up with is the rastafarian faith you know this is what my dad mm -hmm. bring into the yard and um this always kept me on a level of wanting to achieve greater for me and my people four corners of the world you know uh, so going to africa very early in my age you know 17 okay. you know is the first time i went to the gambia you know and i spent there for a month you know did different shows and from then i went there a lot of times you know organizing things and started going into different countries and you know for me this is has always been my strength and mm -hmm. and knowing what i want to achieve knowing where we're going the, the, this mission never changed actually you know all over the years you know because it's so, still the same fight we're fighting so the reggae scene in Gambia is, is, is huge, it's big. Um, reggae music, dancehall music, um, always had a, had a great influence. And especially um, Gambia was just that first place that I touched and really um, build a vibe with, 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 with massive, right? So, yeah, man, from there we went to different places like even Guinea. I toured, I played in Ivory Coast. I played in Ethiopia, a very huge mm. concert, you know, that, that was really great. I spent some time there as well, you know. Um, yeah, man, now I'm playing in Uganda next month. Wow, yeah. moving, At the, the, the biggest <laughs> East African festival yeah. called Nyege Nyege. Nyege Nyege? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's really big. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to go there again and the touch time? the Mama Land. First time in Uganda, okay. yeah, man. For me, that happens very naturally. The fusing of music is just the influence of what I hear, what I grew up with, what I like, you know. So um, I never force music and I always do my music in an authentic way. So when I really want to get the roots reggae sound, I will work with the people them that will give me that sound, the real sound, I, 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 yes. So we're going through the studios in Kingston. When I get to work on a Ama piano beat now or an Afro beat, then I would like to work with the hottest producer in a Nigeria, or not even to say hottest producer, but talented producer that really bring that vibration and that authentic sound that we are going for. So right there, the fusion happens every time, you know, in a natural way. You see me? The, the Afro beat and I'm a piano thing. Are you experimenting? Have you already done it? Yes, definitely, definitely. Right now, um, I just recently released a song called My Temple, you know, um, that was with a youth called Dale of Pete. He's a Ghanaian youth, you know, we work together on that song. And it has that Afro beat, I'm a piano, dance, all fusion kind of vibe, you know. So, yes, we're experimenting with that. Um, for me, it's very important that the music um, say something, can bring a message. Although it's not a must, it's for me personal what keeps me going and what I want to leave, leave for the people, you know. Yeah. Always leave music with substance. And then at the same time, I am very creative and I make a lot of different music. So you will find Kali P songs that are very deep and have really more... Uh, it's more about the message and then there is Kali P songs that are more like for the club well, well, but yet still there is always going to be some lyrical yes. fire mm. some things in it definitely you know and yeah man I think first I want to make people happy with my music and motivate them as well you understand so yeah man we make them move to remain authenticity with a global audience I just do what I love to do and that is being me being the musician that I am, you know, I take my inspiration from everyday life, from what is happening around me, what is happening with me and my people. So keeping on putting these feelings and these experiences into words and music mm. is definitely what keeps the thing going, you know, and keeps also that link with the world because we're speaking about the world exactly. so people can identify with it and say, hey, I'm going through this. 
you know, mm -hmm. uh, this is motivating me in the morning when I get up, uh, you know, this is the song that I want to bounce yeah. within the club. So that is it. Mm -hmm. For me, right before going on stage, I don't like to talk too much, okay. honestly. Really? Uh, yeah, um, I can do this talking after a stage show, you know, but right before on, I go on stage, I more like get quiet, no matter if a lot of people are around and I just go into myself and get ready, you know, because... stay in a separate room? Like, no, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be. I can stay in a separate room, you know, I don't mind if it's quiet for a moment, but mm. if, if, if not, then that's no problem. It's just I'm not going to be the most outgoing person in that moment because I'm just going in and, and, and getting ready because every stage that I step on, for me, myself, I feel like I'm going to introduce myself. I don't feel like I'm going on a I'm stage. Known, everybody knows, everybody what, knows what I'm doing. So every time I go on a stage, I go yeah, and reintroduce my music, you know. So I get ready for that and I get, you know, accustomed to the vibes and the place and then bring that high energy, so you what know. what do you say to them when you first hear this? What do you... Well, mostly I start <laughs> with a prayer, you know. Ah, okay. Yeah, man. Right. Mostly I just bless up the place. Um, a prayer that I would love to say before I go on stage would be Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the world of, an, of Irish and as Jah was in the beginning is now and forever shall be Jah world without end. So we do give thanks and we come together. Step in and music starts and you know it's always different things you know for me it's, it's more like a thing of the moment you know. Also, prayers, you know, is for me something that just in the moment you say what you feel to say. Mm -hmm. X Games is a big event in the US. Really? It's uh, it's the biggest sports event. Oh, it's like you game. know, yeah. Like it's um, it's more like extreme sports, so like um, skiing, but like jumping, oh, you know, from okay. the half pipe wow. and all these kind of things. <laughs> and very interesting. That's that's exactly how I prepare for a, for a stage show. I, I check where I'm going to perform. I check who I'm performing to, you know. And for example, I did a lot of shows at sport events. I did a lot of show at, uh, uh, shows um, with, the, with the whole ski movement, um, free skiers in America, also in Europe. We did tours like that and you can know it's a different crowd than when I play a sound system show at a reggae venue, you so what's know. what's different between the sound system show and all those festivals? Well, I mean the people that attend the show, one is for more sports fans oh, and they yeah. are more like a broad uh, interest of music, they yeah, are maybe, the yes, oh, okay. and then we're playing for the culture for our community mm -hmm. that already know what's happening and what time it is, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love that about um, having a lot of different music, I can choose what kind of vibes I'm bringing to these people, how I'm going to introduce them to my culture tonight, mm -hmm. you understand, yeah. So do you advise other artists to do the same thing or people are different? Well, I think everybody's different. I cannot speak for another artist, you know. Also, what works for me is not what works for another artist. And what works for another artist is not what works for me. So, I think everyone should just do what they feel, you know. Yeah, man. But I, I definitely love to introduce people to culture because I, I saw myself on a lot of stages where I see people clearly from a different culture. So, it's like I bring in what we can bring to the table, you know. In, in 2016, I put out that album, I Thoughts, you know, and that album went billboard, you know, in, in the States. So right there, we had a, a great tour coming with it. And um, in the leg of that tour, we went to Canada and in Quebec, it was a great festival. I played there, Rolling Stones and, and, and Foo Fighters. It was really a great night, great night, man. Well, for me, it's, it's great and that's kind of the thing that makes me be a musician because you can put me on a stage with 50,000 rock fans, you know, and we, we're going to make them feel the vibes and they vibrate with it and they get introduced to something that they love, you know. And that was really, was powerful. And also I saw a lot of people that came there with... Caribbean flags, Jamaican flags, African flags. So that was really, I know our people were present. So it was beautiful, man. 
in, 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 when it comes to music, for me, it's just straight across the board. We just create, we're being creative, you know, and we're meeting great people along the way, you know, that are like-minded and know, the, 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 working in that same field, you know, having that same mission even, you know, so it's really great, you know, for me, I've been living in Jamaica exactly for the reason so that I can work with the greats okay. around in that music, wow. you understand, and really have that exchange, okay. you know, learn and, and be able to bring something that as big well. Step, man. What made you make that big step to move to Jamaica? Um, you have a family there? No, I didn't have no family there. I really had the possibility to go and build a music label mm. and I was like, okay, but if I do this in Switzerland, people don't look to Switzerland for music. Guadeloupe is my place. I love Guadeloupe, you know, I can spend a lot of time there, but in terms of music, it's still a small place. Well, and, uh, the Caribbean. Yeah, oh, okay. French Caribbean French island. Caribbean. Okay. And then I was like, yo, let me go to Jamaica because people have? been telling me, yo, come to Jamaica, <laughs> come to Jamaica. And, you know, it was the greatest decision, you know, to really so, go there and work with the brothers and sisters. Reaching out to you to come, artists or fans? Yeah, it was a lot of artists that I met in the festivals, in the oh. shows earlier, you know. Um, yeah. They always told me, Kali, you, you know, the, the, the way <laughs> you sing and everything, you, 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 you can be in Jamaica, man. People going to love what you do. You know, and then you've been there since. And then, yeah, I went there and stayed there. Oh, bro. Almost 10 years, I can say, like nine years. Do you have, do you have to get a job or just do music go um, through? Yes, I did music straight through, you know. That is definitely what we did, you know. Build up everything there, go to different places there, like the, the parties, you know. Introduce my music Special everywhere, music. of course, like, you know. I did a lot of musical work there and then we just kept touring all the time. So you how know. did you link up with Stone Boy and Sean Pitty? Alright, so Stone Boy, I met Stone Boy when he came to Jamaica the first time. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We received him and bring him to different places as well, you know. Mm. So that's how I met Stone Boy and we've been connecting before that on social media. Oh, okay. You okay, know. Okay. Going forward since years actually. Since a very long time. Is he a fan of yours? Your music or? Um you know, definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We link, we link, we link. Definitely. He loves my music. Long time. I love his music. Long time. So we've been linking up for ages, you know, real thing. And right there, we just say, yo, we are going to make a song. Like I had this song that I was working on with Shane Kuti, mm. who I also met in Spain a okay. few years ago, you know, and we had a great day together, vibing and. After this, we did, the, we did this song and sent it to Stone Boy, and he was just like, yeah man, ready, so. Show Kuti and um, Stone Boy, are they on the same track or different tracks? No, it's the same track. Same track. It's okay. the same track, we did the track, the yeah, three of us. We didn't make a video for it. What's going on? Why? What um, <laughs> you know, the moment the track came out, it was the Corona time, just kicking oh, at yeah. the very same time, you know. And then it was kind of rough to promote the song because people had different things in mind at yeah. that moment. So it didn't make sense to really I go hard on the song. On social media around that time and social media was... Yeah, no, but the, in, it was really not... That was right at the beginning, you know, oh, right oh, okay. at the beginning so before nobody, people start to figure out what they want to do, you know. Yeah, oh, really in that okay. moment. And then it kind of, for me, uh, even me, I was in Africa that time. You know, I had a show in the Gambia oh. and I thought, oh, this is a thing of two weeks and it's going to yeah. be over. So I wait. I end up spending seven months there, yeah. you know. Yeah, what man. And uh, staying, man? no, I had, I had a very nice place there. Mm. Had a very nice place there, man. And I, I was Your just, yes, yes, oh. yes. And, and we stayed there for, for the seven months because it was the best thing to do, really <laughs> and truly. You know, I was free up there. We had very good vibes and also during that time, in, right in the beginning, that's when the song released. So, okay. you know, okay. it was just one of these things, but the song is out, it's out there and I get a lot of good feedback for oh, it. Okay. And we still can do a video for it one day, you know. The recording was sent. I was working in Berlin at the time and I sent it to Sheoni recorded in Nigeria and Stoneboy recorded in Ghana. 
and I remember him calling me on the on the video call. I said, yeah man, we just record the song, man. So yeah man. Um yeah, that was that was a little later, but with Empire we put out the Unstoppable album, we put out the I Thoughts album. Um Empire is really yeah, it's really a family movement. It's my brethren Riga, you know. Uh no, his name is just Riga. And, and um for a long time he has been managing and booking shows with me and we've been putting out records together so build up this empire oh, movement okay. you know yeah man in in infinity infinity the, the the project infinity is really um for me a thing where i wanted to put bring all the different influences of music that are around me together mm. at the moment right now which is more like a modern touch a modern sound so i did some real hardcore dancehall songs that I really love like the way how dancehall needs to sound so I work there with Michael Costa and Suku from War 21 you know great big up and then um, I did like also work with people from my island so yeah we did we did the the, the songs with with Magistral who is from from Guadeloupe really good producer that is more like the new sound of, of dancehall and then we also touch in the, the Ama Piano with um, a man like really Emmys, awesome. you know, from, from Nigeria who did the production okay. there, you know. And then there is one reggaeton type of rhythm wind up with Mercy, who's a Cuban Swiss okay. lady, you know. And, and the, the rhythm there is from Morpheus, is a, is a um, producer in the UK, okay. you know. So. Yeah, man. How many producers have album? On, on, the, on this project, there was um, a few, quite a few that worked together. Work. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So what excites you mm -hmm. about exploring these new musical territories? What excites me about the music territories to explore them is really and truly just the love for the music. Like, I, I, I always do the music that I feel and that I love. So bringing that out and seeing the 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 vibe it gets from the people them and how they receive it you know from them happy me happy me happy them happy so that is it you know yeah man is that exchange that's very important reggae music has always been evolving yes and is always evolving so i'm not really a future teller to tell you where it's gonna be and where it's gonna go but I can tell you there is a lot of promising artists being born every day. True. And I always say like the greatest artist not even born yet. Yeah. So, you know, there is always more to come. And for me, as far and as long as I can, I'll be putting out music, you know, and also creating music, producing for people, writing for people. So this is really full circle that will always continue you know that's why also the new project is called infinity because once you put it out it's there forever you know and we don't stop so yeah so how are you trying to promote this new project when it comes in november what are the plans you to promote this new project you know for me it's always organic growth is with the people i come and spread the message people spreading the message this is what it lives from exactly you know we have Great people like even you, you know, that are there being a media that can give the people the news of new music, of something that they can discover. Right now we don't have the record shops anymore like we used to have. So we are even relaying more on spreading the message amongst each other, and you know. Social media too. Definitely, definitely. Um, checking the age when I went there, I was like 24 25 you know i definitely grew also on a personal level while being in jamaica so definitely i give thanks for that you know it wow. definitely shaped Sh Kali shape you. you know wow. in every form not only musically also as i say personally and on a spiritual level so i'm always grateful for that time Even you know jamaica, this really changed your accent as well this, 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 
Yeah, we, we, I mean, we've been speaking <laughs> from, we are little youth, you know, we grew up listening reggae music, dancehall music, really wanting to understand everything, really going off the lyrics, mm -hmm. you know, so this is something I was always into and just grew up speaking like that. Mm -hmm. There we can speak straight across the board, you know, um, it's not even genre specified, but I can say always that people must know like the journey is a very long journey and when I say the journey the journey of being a musician of being in music is a long journey so always be patient always be kind keep the fire blazing you know mm. and stand up for the right things it's always better to stand up for something than for nothing mm. you know but at the same time keep kind you know keep the respect for the people out there because you will find out today you get to know someone in the music fraternity in the music business and this person will be there just like you for the mm. next 20 30 years mm. so it's always good to be kind you know and don't take things personal mm. and take time you understand because everyone will have their time when they discover you for mm. them just like you said you just heard about me yesterday exactly. it was that time and we give thanks we are thankful to be here you know if I do how like do you, it, yes, sure. How do you like it? How do you handle it? How do you handle that? Oh, we, we listen. We listen with care, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's better somebody, if somebody can give you a, um, mm -hmm. like a, 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 a advice or a, a, a critique, you know. I think it's better than someone just lying to lying you, to you. <laughs> you know, pretending mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. like something that they maybe don't. I have something to add to it or, yeah. or to teach you you know, that you can do better. So I always have an open ears for people. Always. Yeah, man, and we listen, and then we calculate and check, do the maths, <laughs> and do the right thing. Do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it doesn't reflect the full ability of an artist, just mm -hmm. the chart placement. The chart placement shows you that it's been widely heard. Yeah. at this moment because it's streaming we're talking about so once yeah. it gets a lot of streams mean it's widely heard yeah. it has a reach yeah, a you know that. um we also know that there is a lot of playlists and things so sometimes people get to hear something not even ac actively going for it like we used to do in the record shops mm -hmm. when we take out a vinyl right. and we say hey let me listen to this new <laughs> Sean Kuti you know, because I like the cover yeah, yeah. and let me check it out. This speaks to me, you know, so things change within the time. But, um, you know, that is how it goes. And if people measure with numbers, you have to know like numbers, they are there, you know, to be numbers. I think for me, what counts is the skills, the musical okay. skills. That's why I love a live concert. Live concert. That's why I try to um, everywhere I go and perform, I perform with live musicians because that's something that needs to be mastered that's something that needs to be learned and nourished you know i think i'm a better singer right now than 20 years ago because i've been training i've been doing this all the time i try to strain my voice and reach different heights so this is really the background work that people maybe don't see but you cannot go around and i think that really brings the skill of an artist that people maybe cannot measure because that's not what they see, yeah. right? They see the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, people can reach out to Calipi via social media. You know, we have um, Calipi Music, C-A-L-I-P Music on the Instagram. Um, same way, YouTube channel, you understand? We have TikTok, it's Calipi. And um, people can reach out. Yeah.